Not long ago, I went to my 40th high school class reunion. And I talked to a friend. He told me that he had visited the campus. While walking, he was reminiscing over all the things that we went through. See, in 1970 was the year of integration for the Wake County Public Schools. And during that, before that, everybody that went to school was all black, all white. So my next question to him was, what happened to the Mexican and the Spanish? Where they go to school at over here? Because we knew where we went to school at. But when we got integrated, we were treated so bad. I'm going to tell you how bad it was. It was so bad that if your family made a certain amount of money, and you didn't get free lunch. I ate sometime off someone else's meal card. That's how bad it was. My bus ride to school was an hour and 15 minutes, brother. I got up at 6.30 in the morning to catch the bus at 7.30 to get to school late 30. That's how bad it was. But they didn't care. And we just thank God for all the times he brought us through that part in our life. But while on this trip down memory lane, here come one of our other former classmates. He said, Jimmy, I heard you served in the military. I said, yes, I did, for 24 years. Then he asked me, did you ever go to college after graduation? I said, no, I didn't. And I didn't because I wasn't prepared and couldn't afford it. I guess he was bragging on himself, telling us all the things he had accomplished. Then I went on to tell him, well, I worked for a mortgage company in the collection department, and I was called in the ministry to preach. He looked at me and said, well, it sounds like you've done well for yourself, but I don't understand why are you in that church Worry about all the mother folk to take care of your life and your family. He said, you're wasting your time. These are the words that come out of his mouth. I looked at him. I said, can I talk now? Can I say a little something? I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be disrespectful. But I believe I got to preach to you right now. Because I have the courage to be myself. I told him when I first started out to preach, I wanted to be like T.D. Jakes. And then I tried to be like Bishop G.E. Patterson. And I tried to be like so many others. I tried to avoid everything but being like me. And then God said, I need you to be yourself. And I just kept on and I told him, I may look nice in this three-piece suit. And I have on a nice tie. And I have on some expensive shoes. And I drive a nice car but I may not have the most money. I may not have the biggest house. I may not have the greatest job, but I do have the Lord in my life. And I said, uh, I have the courage to be myself. You see, I'm from a little town called Hollow Spring, North Carolina. Anybody know what that is? I think I have no hands go up. So from that town, we didn't even have a high school. That's how small it was. We had one stoplight, Pastor. One stoplight, one car wash, and one grocery store. When I left. But now you go down and you get lost. So nobody wanted to be from Hollis Springs. So I reminded him where we came from. I'm, I'm from a, I'm a, just a young boy from a little old town called Hollis Springs, North Carolina. But I do have the courage to be myself. So as I get ready to close, I just came by to tell somebody that God is calling you to be yourself, not what people want you to be, not what people think you should be. Don't worry about feeling good. Just do what the Lord
Lord said, because when you have courage, courage is digging deep within to do what others won't do. Courage is acting out in spite of fear. Courage is standing up when no one else will. Courage is joining when others are against the odds. Courage is being overmatched and still facing the enemy. And courage is never let your actions be influenced by your fears. Courage is what takes to stand up and speak the truth. But courage is also what it takes to sit down and be quiet. Oh, Lord. Courage change things. Courage provides opportunities. Courage open doors. Courage won't gossip. Oh, Lord. Courage counts. Courage is doing the right thing when it makes you unpopular. Courage is doing the right thing when your friends walk away from you. No, sometimes when you're doing the right thing, your friends will, will jump off will leave you like jumping off a boat on, on water. Because see, sometimes what friends do, they don't hang around when you got something. And I found that out when I was young, too. As long as I had something, I had friends. But as soon as I didn't have anything, all my friends just ran away. Like rats jumping off a ship. Sad. But courage comes from the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody in here this evening that wants to grab a hold of that carriage? Is there anybody in here this evening that's ready to serve the Lord? If you are somebody, shout yeah. Oh, yeah. Say yes. Say yes. See, the problem is that an attribute that seems to be missing in our churches today is rather than digging deep to find the strength to answer the call to courage, we just ja barely scratch the surface of courage, and we just settle for conformity. Everybody trying to fit in. But when you are saved, he said you are set apart. So that means you're different. If you're different, you ain't going to fit in. You're not going to fit in. If you want to fit in, leave the church. Because this is where we're supposed to be different. He calls us to set apart to do his work, not our work. It's not about me. I got to deny myself for the benefit of mankind. Start thinking about those folks who had courage. Let's think about Noah. He had courage. They thought he was crazy out of building a boat. Think about Moses. He had courage. Moses couldn't talk. He was afraid, but God encouraged him. He stepped out on faith. Elijah, Daniel in the lion's den. All those were heroes of faith. And all of them had courage. Do you have the courage to be yourself? And do you have the courage to serve the Lord? When we get the courage to do the will of God and understand doing the right thing, get out of tradition, get how it used to be yesterday, because 20 years ago I had a head full of hair, but I don't. How things used to be are gone. When I was 20 years old, I smoked marijuana. Yeah, I did. I drank. I did all the things that I thought that I should do to fit in. Young people these days have more challenges than drinking and smoking and young girls. There's a lot of things going on out there. So you got to understand it's more a temptation on them than we had. It's more. And they are afraid to come and talk to you about those experiences. They're going to test them. They're going to test them. 
So you got to build that trust with them. To understand, I can come and talk to you about anything. Yeah, I messed up. I smoked. And why am I telling you? Because I don't want you to get addicted. I want you to find out, find yourself out there with some sexual disease. Don't condemn him. Instruct them. But well, we are so quick to condemn, but we did it, and God didn't condemn us. So we got to learn how to have courage enough to talk to them about this. Build that trust. The bridge has been torn down, and nobody's coming across it until we get it fixed. Nobody's coming across. And as we get older, and we don't prepare the church, what happens? church died. Because we want to hold on to. We want to be right instead of do right. You don't have to compromise, but you have to understand the things they are going through. They probably can tell you some things that you will never even understand. Why? That you will never even see. But it's happening to them. I can tell you some things about me that you wouldn't believe that I experienced after 24 years in the military. But God, but God, I've seen some things, mother. I've seen some, I've seen what acid can do to a young man. I've seen what cocaine can do to a young man. I've seen a life, one jump off a building on drugs. I've seen it. Dad got to go home and tell his mother what happened to him. But if they are having problems and don't have nobody to come and talk to, the problem gets larger. So we, we got to stop condemning and start listening. We don't have to accept it, but understand it. Now, I'm not going to accept you're doing wrong, but I'm understand that you got more temptation. So I'm going to encourage you in the word of God to be better. I'm going to tell you the consequences of doing wrong. Hopefully that will scare you still. But we got to have an open dialogue. So if you have the courage today to be what God has called you to be, the courage to step out on faith, the courage to walk away from the crowd, the courage to do what God has called you to do, the courage to go out and build our church. The courage to be set apart. The courage to be different. You can just stand where you are. Or if you want to care. You've done something wrong. You know it. You say, how can I fix it? You got to admit it first. I was wrong. And I'm going to get the courage to do right. I know somebody ain't going to like it but I'm going to do right anyway. I know that I'm going to have some, some of my friends that's going to jump off the boat. So why are they hanging on to me? Because I got some. But the courage to do the right thing. This church here in Jerusalem will never grow until we all get the courage. It's going to take more than one. One accord, one church, one faith, one God, one Lord. Let us all stand. We're going to pray together. Father, we're coming to you this evening. We're praying, Father, that something said today, a seed has been planted in someone's heart or someone's mind. Give them the strength, Father, that when they leave today, go back and seek in your word and find the strength to step out, the strength to stand up, the strength to reach out to those who are lost, the strength to reach out to one another. We pray, Father, that we learn how to love one another. 
not just let it be words. Because we hear that all the time. I love you. I want you. I need you around. But Father, action speaks louder than words. We pray for unity. We want all of us to be on one accord. We can disagree, Father, but we are doing it for you. Not for me, not to benefit anybody else, but for you, Lord. We pray that we come to an understanding with our young people. They just misunderstood sometimes. And sometimes they're trying to find themselves. We pray, Father, that they get the courage to come and talk to us. Speak what's on their mind. We may not agree, but we need to learn how to listen. And Father, when we speak to them, let them understand that we're teaching because we don't want you to go down the road that we went down. We don't want to condemn them. We want to keep them safe. Father, we pray that all that are here tonight, we come up under your hand, touch our hearts and our minds, that we may receive what you have for us in our lives those who are sick, touch their body. For those who have a need, Father, you know what it is. Provide it for them. Father, we ask all these things in your name. Amen.